On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most inspired visionaries on the planet in lighthearted, lively dialogue. Join us as we explore the expansive nature of reality in a down-to-earth way, offering you insights and tools, empowering you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Now, here's your host, Christine Upchurch. Hello, everybody. Welcome. I'm so glad you're joining us here today. You might be listening live here on 1150 AM KKNW on Transformation Talk Radio from anywhere around the world. Uh, or you might be listening after the fact of one of the, I don't know how many dozens of, of, of podcasts and, and syndicated spots it ends up, including on ChristineUpchurch.com. But wherever and whenever you're listening from today, you're going to be glad you joined us because we are going to be talking about something that is really important, and it's actually quite important to all generations, but it's particularly important to the baby boomers. Uh, but f- before I get into that, I want to say hello to the man behind all the controls who allows you to hear these wonderful conversations, Mr. Benny Mathers. Good morning, Benny. Hi there. Good day. Nice to see you in person. You as always. And um, nothing to report really much on my side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just, well, school's back in session, I guess, for the kids. Yes. So uh, that's a big <laughs> relief for some parents out there, including right. myself. Uh, Although it, it does mean that, I mean, I know you get up early because you work really yeah. early, but um, for those of us who don't, the getting back into the school schedule is kind of um, dreadful yeah, and, I could, I could and painful. <laughs> However, my son's going to college and he's going to be off to Western in just a couple of weeks. It's awesome. Yeah, like a little over a week. And so you're going to uh, send him a care package right away? Yeah, you, absolutely. Yeah, that's good. My yeah. mom did the same thing. It was so adorable. She sent me broccoli. Broccoli? She did, yeah, she didn't think I was going to get my vegetables. Oh, <laughs> she, that's hilarious. It was a joke. I didn't find it funny. I she, she sent another one right afterwards, like the next day. But she's like, this is my mom's way of her humor, too, uh-huh. by the way. She's like, because all the kids, I kind of... I kind of complained a little bit because everyone was getting one. I'm like, yeah. I'm not getting one. She's like, oh, okay, I'll send one. So she did. She sent me like a magazine and some broccoli. She's just making sure you ate your vegetables. <laughs> I obviously did not find it hilarious. Aww. And then the next day was like a thing, a Rice Krispie Treat. So Yes, and Rice really Krispie nice. Treat is probably the first thing I'm going to send. Good. Because, we'll see. There you go. Yeah. Great moms think alike. Exactly. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of, of our talk on the show, a lot of our conversations focus on Improving our quality of life, whether we're talking about healing on a psychological level, healing on a physical level, whether we're talking about shifting our consciousness to be more connected with our soul, we, we tend to focus on improving our quality of life as we are humans um, on this adventure. You know, uh, we want to express our souls, we want to be in tune with our souls, and we want to thrive. And my guest today is somebody who's helping people do that in a different way than I had ever heard of before, and it makes perfect sense. And the woman I'm talking about is Rita Wilkins. Um, She is the founder of Design Services Limited. She's got over 35 years of experience in design and management. She's known to be highly effective at hands-on designing with extensive experience in residential and commercial spaces. She's designed hundreds of interiors throughout the country, from designer kitchens to corporate penthouses to Supreme Court Justice Chambers. Isn't that cool? And you may be thinking, well, what does that have to do with me? You know, we're talking on the radio. She's not exactly in my living room helping me to design my space. But we'll get to that. She's a graduate of the University of Rhode Island. She attended Rhode Island School of Design, uh, University of North Carolina, and University of Virginia. Sounds like she's an overachiever. She's the recipient of many design awards, and she's been published in numerous national publications. And she has a new book coming out, and this is the title, Downsize Your Life, Upgrade Your Lifestyle. I'd like to welcome our guest today, Rita Wilkins. Hi, Rita. (laughs) Hi, Christine. What a great introduction. Thank you. (laughs) Oh, you're welcome. You know, um, (laughs) we have never talked about this on the show, but this feels really, really important. And, you know, the show's been going on for almost six years now. So uh, to, to reach a topic that we haven't talked about before that relates so much to quality of life, uh, it, it's, it's pretty significant. And when I got the chance to talk to you in Philadelphia on business, 
when I got to see some of your um, your postings and your website, I, I recognized that your book coming out, Downsize Your Life, Upgrade Your Lifestyle, is a really important topic. Why did you write this book? <laughs> so isn't it interesting what, what makes our life um, change? So for 35 years, I've been in the interior design and lifestyle design business, and we have impacted people all over the country. And it was a trip to a country 8,000 miles from here. I live in Philadelphia. Uh My son had been serving in the Peace Corps, and I stayed with him for a month in his tiny little hut. And part of the journey was that the, the minute we arrived, the village elder picked up a live scrawny chicken and handed it to us as our gift. And I knew in my head and my heart how valuable that gift was to me. Right. And then that evening, his African mother prepared the most beautiful dinner, and her kitchen table was on the ground. Fifteen people sat around the circle, and she served a beautiful dinner of grains and vegetables, and that one tiny little chicken sat on top. And she pushed the better parts of the chicken towards my son and me. Now, that was a life-changing moment for me because I thought, These are people who have nothing, but they're filled with joy and they're generous. Mm -hmm. And all I know is that I wanted that. And when I got back on the airplane to return back to my very large 5,000 square foot home, I looked around and nothing seemed the same to me. Uh And so you weren't the same, right? I I was not the same. Uh (laughs) Yeah. So something had definitely shifted. And, And what it really was is, being present to all these beautiful things that I had surrounded myself with all of these years. And, of course, I love my design world. Mm -hmm. But it was about what I made all of that stuff mean. Mm. So as I walked through my big 5,000-square-foot home and I looked around, nothing looked the same to me. And I owned a big building at that time where my design firm was. It didn't look the same. So what I really got, it it was the beginning of my downsizing journey, my journey to living with less so I could live more. So So why why is it that, say, I'm sorry, Mm -hmm. um, why is it that living in something like a 5,000 square foot house isn't like living the big life? Like that, that, that seems like so many people's ideal. Exactly. And what I had really, what I realized is that I was trapped in thinking that I needed all of that to be happy. And I had made them symbols of success, um, <clears throat> meaning that they were defining me. Uh-huh. And for many years, the more I could buy, the bigger I could build, the better car I could have, all of that. And, and our baby boomer generation, we created consumerism. Mm-hmm. So I was very much a part of what, what we created. And it was only after going to a third world country where people have nothing that I realized These symbols of success that I had made it mean didn't matter to me at all. And and I kept thinking, how could people who have nothing be so happy? And so that was that was stuck in my brain for a couple of years and I finally decided to sell my big home Mm -hmm. and I gave away ninety five percent of what I once owned to people who needed it or wanted it. Wow. And then when I moved here to my tiny Jewel box apartment, 867 square feet in Philadelphia. Uh I sat here and I thought, I have all I want and all I need. And I've never been happier. Interesting. So the message really was so profound. I did a TEDx talk just like you did. Uh And it was downsize your life. Why less is more? Because I realized the impact of living with less was so great that I needed to share it with the world. And now... You know, with my lifestyle design division of my company, mm-hmm. um, we we impact lives by elevating the quality of their life. So part of what we're doing is, is the book, of course. And when you downsize your life, and when you think about it, areas of our life, i.e. technology, a lot of us need to go on a technology sabbatical Mm -hmm. where we don't have to pick up that phone every minute of the day. Um, The the amount of time that we as human, as as Americans spend on our phone will equate to over five years of our life. Oh my goodness. That's an incredible number. It is. (laughs) And so when you think of what you could do with five more years on your life for adding quality, 
it makes you think like, okay, so if I didn't pick up the phone the minute I get out, out of bed and if I, you know, only check my email once or twice a day, those are the little things that you can do to downsize your life, to upgrade the quality of your life. Mm-hmm. So Rita, um, and, I, I, I'm thinking about the 5,000 square foot home and you talked about sort of status symbols and that sort of thing. But what if mm-hmm. people aren't attached in that same way? What's mm-hmm. the difference between living in, say, a 5,000-square-foot home and, an, and a you know, little, slightly under 900-square-foot apartment? Mm-hmm. So you're right. Attachment is not something that, that everyone has. Um, I happen to have had, been very attached to myself in doing what I do now with the downsizing journey. Many people are attached to the meaning that mm-hmm. they um, put on you know, having a nice home right. and a nice car and a big job and, and all of those kind of things. <clears throat> what, what happens when you live with less, and mine was rather radical, and, and mm-hmm. not everyone would want to have that kind of radical downsizing, you value what you have more. Ah. And it becomes a very clear distinction about the piece of having enough. Right. And right. Instead of, like, always needing life, more. Yeah. Exactly. Too many people struggle with, I'm not enough, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I don't have enough stuff, my neighbor has this and I don't. When you can be comfortable with who you are and say, I have enough and I have all I want and all I need, there's so much peace that comes with that. Mm -hmm. It's a spiritual kind of journey in a way um, because you really are then looking at, I have so little But then it's like, what else can I do? Mm -hmm. And that's when your journey and your your life gets even bigger because now you have more time, money, and freedom to explore what's next. This is fascinating. And and, yeah, Yeah. baby boomers are right in that little, you know, pocket about how can I make a difference for this next 20 or 30 years that I'll, I'll be living. Absolutely. Uh, We have to go to a quick break, but stay tuned for more with Rita Wilkins. Are you ready to shift gears from spiritual seeker to spiritual rock star? Let Nova Whiteman be your aligning force that will help you navigate the ups and downs of this human experience. Tune in to Spiritual Alignment Radio with Nova Whiteman every second Tuesday at 12 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more, visit NovaWhiteman.com. That's N-O-V-A-W-I-G-H-T-M-A-N.com. Are you traveling most of your day? Do you want to take Transformation Talk Radio with you anywhere you go? Well, guess what? There's an app for that. Just go to the App Store on your Apple device or the Google Play Store on your Android and search Transformation Talk Radio. Catch all of our live shows no matter where you are. Thanks for listening. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Time. Radio. Don't miss out on an opportunity to hear from Lou Paradise, health and vibrant living expert and founder of Topperson. Lou is a featured speaker at the New You Life Conference in Connecticut, Saturday, September 15th. Tickets are available now. For information and tickets, click the button on the homepage of louparadise.com. That's louparadise.com. I'm Christine Upchurch, and this is a Stellar Reflections Minute. As a former research statistician, my scientific background is what many would call sensible. For more than a decade now, I have been working in the field of energy medicine, facilitating sessions and teaching around the world. People from the mainstream often ask me, how did a sensible woman like you end up working in such an alternative field? 
Implicit in their question is the underlying assumption that the field of subtle energy, such as energy healing and intuition, isn't sensible. But I believe it is very sensible. Even scientists are able to measure aspects of this. Approaching life from an energetic perspective brings us new opportunity for healing and transformation. And from a practical standpoint, even if you can't rationally explain how something works, if you experience a shift from it, then doesn't it make it pretty sensible? Please visit StellarReflections.com or call 425-999-9836. That's 425-999-9836. Welcome back to the Christine Eptert Show here on KKNW and Transformation Talk Radio. You know, Rita, um, I'm fascinated by this concept of downsizing. And I have to tell you that when I left my marriage, gosh, four years ago, four and a half years ago, something like that, I left a larger home and I, I moved into a smaller home. Uh, most people wouldn't call it small, but it was, it was definitely probably about, I don't know, a third smaller and it felt so much cozier to me. It it felt um, it it felt more supportive in some sense. I didn't feel like I was rattling around in this big space. And um, and it although you know homeownership has whether you're owning an apartment or you're owning a, a large home, there are things you have to deal with. Uh, there was something about downsizing that ultimately was very supportive and healing for me. Mm. It's, it's a great conversation, <clears throat> and and there was a client that I was just talking to the other day. They're they're quite wealthy, and they own several homes, uh-huh. <clears throat> and two of those homes are very small, and the one is very large. The one that she's having the trouble living in is the one that's large, uh-huh. and she said, Rita, I don't know what it is, but there's something about going to those smaller homes. They feel cozier. They feel, as you're calling it, supportive. <clears throat> And and she said that there's just a peace that comes over me when I'm at either of those other homes. Interesting. Now, that's not everyone's case, that they have three different homes. But I think sure. it speaks to your point of of having something that is more manageable. Mm-hmm. And so when I think back to my large home, I was, I was in this crazy cycle of having to work harder so I could pay for all the people to come and help me with the property. Sure. And when you think of that, isn't that kind of crazy? That's not a quality of life. Uh-huh, right. <laughs> and, um, you know, my wake-up call was, you know, the, the last check that I wrote, and it was to a wonderful guy that did all of my yard work. And I just thought, what am I thinking? Uh-huh. You know, so, <clears throat> of course, now living in the city, I don't have a yard. Uh-huh. And I am actually living in a tiny little apartment. And for the first time since college, I'm actually renting. Oh, which is another trend right now with baby boomers. Yeah, so what because, is that about? Yeah. Well, what it's about is <clears throat> a lot of flexibility, uh-huh. mobility, and not a lot of responsibility. Right, right. <laughs> so that sounds kind of funny, doesn't it, to, to say I actually want no responsibility. Uh-huh. <clears throat> but the reality is that if I need something, I simply call our, our people at the front desk, and then they take care of it for me. Uh-huh. <clears throat> and because I travel so much, you know, they they kind of. I always know that it's safe and that it's manageable. Right. And I, I barely have to do anything to take care of it. It takes me about thirty minutes to clean it, and I clean it myself. Oh my <laughs> so, goodness! Thirty minutes. So what what really happens when when you are in a smaller space? Is, and I don't know if you've recognized this, but do you have more time living in a smaller space? Time Gosh. dedicated to, I, you know, what you have around you. Well, it's it's hard for me to to sort of um, figure that out because I I have more time and space because I'm no longer in a difficult relationship. So <laughs> I got that. <laughs> it's it's confounded, um, and you know there's there's still a lot of responsibility at owning a house. You know, I've got a deck that needs to be um, rebuilt, and uh, mm-hmm. I've got issues with my septic tank that need to be addressed. And I'm just like, there's always something to deal with. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. Which is one reason baby boomers are choosing to rent. Mm -hmm. There's some very high numbers, um, and I'm going to say that it's around 40% of baby boomers are really 
doing that, and another 15 or 20 percent are actually considering it. Uh And when you look at our age bracket, I think I'm a little bit older than you are, (laughs) but, you know, to try to recover um, purchasing something again at this point, especially when I travel so much and I I like the idea of just having a turnkey kind of life, um, there are certainly advantages. And there's disadvantages, too. But the reality for me is that I have more time, money, and freedom to mm-hmm. pursue the things that really matter to me. Right. And and that is a place where then you can just say, you know, well, what will I do with that other time? So after I downsized from my big home, <clears throat> I looked at my company and I said, you know, I don't really want to work five days a week anymore. Uh-huh. <laughs> so we have chosen to work three days and play four days. Wow. And yet we still grew the company by 27%. Isn't that <clears throat> <And> interesting? That, <laughs> well, it was it was fascinating to me, too, and I think, why didn't I do that many years ago? Uh-huh. <laughs> but the reality was it was all about <clears throat> being highly intentional, which is what lifestyle design is. It's intentional living. Uh-huh. You know, every day you make choices. So when we're together now, the three days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're highly intentional about the work that we're, what we have to accomplish for that week and for the next week. And then we, we don't leave until we get it done, which is, you know, it, it's amazing. But every Wednesday we're done. Uh-huh. And then that leaves then four days. And <clears throat> that's when I've been writing my book and traveling and speaking a lot more. Right. But right. for me, that's all just fun. It, <clears throat> it's interesting so. because one of the things I've found um, is that when I go on vacation, Oftentimes, something big will open up in my career. It, it you know, it might be once mm-hmm. upon a time it might have been something as, as minor as like getting onto a radio show or something like that. But it's it's like there's an opening or uh, something creative comes through me that helps me sort of you know redesign a course I'm teaching or whatever. But it, it's almost mm-hmm. like having space and time just to be um, allows the flow that helps our business. I think that's fascinating, and, and that's, it's an amazing conversation because when you think about America, we have created busyness as almost a drug of choice. Yes. So it becomes a badge of honor when, when you see someone and you say, how are you doing? Oh, I'm so busy. Uh-huh. And, and that's a badge of honor. And when you look at that, we're trying to multitask. We're, we're trying to be productive. Mm-hmm. But in fact, you know, we're really not productive. And so <clears throat> Bill Gates started this a number of years ago, and he calls it Think Week. So he has intentionally put on his calendar a time to slow down and recalibrate and to gain clarity on what to do next. Interesting. And obviously we know what he's done. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and yeah. Tim, Tim Ferriss from 4-Hour Work Week. Uh-huh. He does that, and a couple of other, you know, big-name players. Right. And this is so interesting because in Italy, <clears throat> they have something called, and I'm not, my, my pronunciation is not going to be quite right, but it's dolce far niente, which okay. means the, sweet, the sweetness of doing nothing. Ah. So when you're talking about vacation, you slow down, and you might have, you know, a leisurely you know, dinner or breakfast or uh-huh. coffee, uh-huh. and you don't have everything pressing on you. <clears throat> and so when you have the sweetness of doing nothing on vacation, no wonder you're open mm-hmm. to more, you know, to more creativity right? and to just, you know, having the peace and so forth. In Sweden, they have what's called busyness prevention. <laughs> <laughs> which is not- I love that. <laughs> I know, business prevention. So not too much, not too little. Uh-huh. Everything is just right. So living life in moderation. And when you think about the Swedes, number one, they were named the happiest country in the world. Right, but right. But the, the way that they work, the way they dress, the way they eat, um, they keep stress and anxiety, uh, you know, at a minimum. Uh-huh. So... You know, I think we have a lot to learn from other countries. Yeah, and I think, is, is it Sweden that has um, shorter school days and they don't have any homework and they do, their kids ultimately do really well um, uh, in, in terms of their, their education? Um, and I think about yeah. what we do to our children now, long school mm-hmm. days, lots of homework, um, 
mm-hmm. music lessons, dance lessons, sports. Mm-hmm. We're cramming our kids' schedules with yeah. do, do, do mm-hmm. without time for them to just be and play. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that brings up another story that I think is so profound. You know, in America, eating dinner at the kitchen table or whatever the meal is at the kitchen table uh-huh. with family. Right. That is a passion for me that I, it's a movement that I'd like to create is bring back the kitchen table to America. Uh-huh. And and to your point, you know, there uh, kids are, are pushed through, you know, every kind of lesson, every kind of sport, every everything. And who's really doing that to them? It, it's, it's really the parents. Absolutely. You know, so, yeah, we're all guilty, right? And, mm-hmm. and I was guilty as well. But, you know, wisdom comes with age. <laughs> and when <laughs> yeah. I look back, you know, some of my kids, I have two sons as well, mm-hmm. um, some of the happiest times were when they were playing in a refrigerator box out in on the front yard, uh-huh. you know, because they loved their boxes. And right. So the simplest things are the ones that maybe they get the greatest joy. But if we could bring back conversations um, around that kitchen table with families and friends, um, putting down all devices. So that we learn how to communicate, really communicate again. Mm-hmm. It's be- it's becoming a lost art, <clears throat> and so, in a way, it goes to your your conversation about vacation. You know, so when you have time to, um, you know, just regroup, and so a family regrouping around the kitchen table, you regrouping on vacation. Uh-huh. Um, that's what our brains do need yes. in order to really be effective. Yeah, and probably our nervous yeah. system as well. Uh, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to go to another Mm -hmm. quick break, but stay tuned for more of this fascinating conversation about downsizing your life and upgrading your lifestyle with Rita Wilkins here in just a few moments. Don't miss out on an opportunity to hear from Lou Paradise, health and vibrant living expert and founder of Toprison. Lou is a featured speaker at the New You Life Conference in Connecticut, Saturday, September 15th. Tickets are available now. For information and tickets, click the button on the homepage of louparadise.com. That's louparadise.com. Calling all moms, it's time to awaken your vibrant, intuitive, loving self in every area of your life. Join host Debbie Pokornik as she shares thoughts, stories, and tools to help you stand in your power. Listen to Vibrant Powerful Moms Helping Everyday Women Create Extraordinary Lives, Mondays at 2.30 Pacific, 5.30 Eastern. For more information about Debbie, visit empoweringenergy.com. That's empowering with letters N-R-G dot com. Did you know that all of the shows on the Transformation Radio Network are available as podcasts to stream or download? Really? Check us out. Go to TransformationRadio.fm. We have business shows, spiritual shows, energy healing shows, and pretty much everything in between. Something for everyone guaranteed to inspire, educate, and transform. We are transforming the world one listener at a time. Conscious Confidence Radio, a timeless wisdom with Sarah Main. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio and join Sarah on an adventurous journey to the deeper level of meaning to move beyond today's world of constant change, confusion, and uncertainty beyond the shadow of fear. This hit show explores key concepts such as confidence, values, and attitude in a dynamic way. To learn more about Sarah and her work, visit sarahmain.com. Miss any shows during the week? Don't worry, we've got you covered. With the free Transformation Talk radio app, you'll have access to all of the past week's shows in the palm of your hand. Tune in to Transformation Talk radio anywhere you go with our free app for any of your devices. Check out our app in the App Store and Google Play Store today. 
on the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome back to the Christine Upchurch Show here on KKNW and Transformation Talk Radio. I'm having a wonderful conversation today with Rita Wilkins. And Rita is the author of an upcoming book, Downsize Your Life, Upgrade Your Lifestyle, which I think is an incredibly important topic. Now, we've been talking about how this affects baby boomers, and I know that that's a passion of yours. But one of the things I'm so fascinated by, now I have to tell you that um, I don't watch a lot of TV, but the TV that I like is like HGTV, Home and Garden Television. I like to see <laughs> renovations and, and mm-hmm. interior decorating, and you know that, that's fun for me. But one of the things I'm so fascinated by is the, the tiny home mm-hmm. kind of uh, craze. And there are a lot of young people and young families who are choosing to live in these like 350 square foot homes with, say, mm-hmm. two or three kids. Uh, why do you think that young people are making those choices? <clears throat> well, I, I do believe that, you know, they've, ha- they've been impacted by the way that we live. You know, you were talking about your homes, and, and mm-hmm. you know, I'm talking about my home. So we, we had larger homes. The reality for baby boomers is that if they have either Gen X or Gen Y kids, uh-huh. likely they are going to choose to live with less because that is maybe in their brains from us having so much. Uh-huh. The reality is our kids do not want our stuff. Right. And it's a very hard fact of life for baby boomers you know, of course, we have that china, that crystal, that mm-hmm. silver, all of those things we cherished. Our kids do not want it. Yeah, isn't that and, interesting? And that's a very harsh reality. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> many kids are choosing to live in urban lifestyle, where, of course, there is not a lot of big real estate, so they are in tiny apartments. Uh-huh. They research everything. So <clears throat> in order to buy a sofa, you know, they... They have so much knowledge about that so far <laughs> and how much it is and everything else, which uh-huh. is all good. Right. And I'm, I'm laughing, but it, it's so true that they are choosing, making choices, very discriminating choices, mm-hmm. and being discerning about what they want and what they don't want. And so much of it is driven by the fact that they don't have the big space that, that you and I might have had where, you know, we have more rooms, so we fill it with more stuff, uh-huh. and then we want more stuff because we have a bigger house. Right. When they have, when they're choosing to live with less, they're even choosing to live without cars, you know, so they can share cars, they can do ride share, they can do Lyft and Uber. Mm-hmm. If they want a, a really pretty beach house, they can, they can rent a beach house, you know. So it's very interesting to see the demographic um, differences, mm-hmm. and in terms of tiny houses and lifestyle, um, I think they definitely have an application, you know. So. Whether it be for for young younger people or for young families, another application is older adults. Uh-huh. You know, there's such a thing as a granny house that sits in your backyard, and that's where mom lives. Right. And you know, we're, so <clears throat> it's a movement, and and honestly, um, <laughs> there are some absolutely stunning tiny houses. Uh, there are. And, and, <clears throat> And I grew up in, in Germany, so we, we did have a big house in Germany, but uh-huh. everything was built in, everything. So we didn't have a lot of furniture uh-huh. because it was behind the walls. Right. And I learned so much from that in my, my design brain because I love building things in because it's clean, it's pristine, it's in a way minimalist looking, mm-hmm. but high functionality. That's great. And that's really what tiny houses do. Everything has multifunction. Uh-huh. So, you know, the the table becomes a bed, becomes a desk. <laughs> uh-huh. And and we've designed some of that kind of furniture for, for tiny apartments. And, and um, we were actually being considered to do a tiny house village. Um, 
which is, is very appealing because there there's definitely a movement out there. Uh-huh. So, yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting, too, because um, <laughs> for a while, like, we used to vacation down in Arizona every year, and I thought, wouldn't it be fun to live down there? When I would look at places down there, never did buy, but when I looked at places down there, I thought, I'd want a smaller space because there's so much outdoor living. And mm-hmm. in here in the Pacific Northwest, for nine months of the year, there's a whole lot of rain. So it was nice to have a little bit more space so the, the kids and all their friends could play around inside. It would be on top of, of us. But I think that there's something really, um, something wonderful about having uh, something smaller to live in but have an area where it's shared, whether it's gardens, whether it's like a community center. Uh, I think that that's a, a great concept. For sure. And I think there's, you know, as baby boomers are aging, of course, that's the demographic that I primarily market to. Uh-huh. Um, there is such a thing as just shared housing now, you know, where homes are being retrofitted to um, have um, more than one family in there, more than one couple. Uh-huh. There's something called Silver Nest. It's like an Airbnb for senior citizens because it, it helps with affordability of housing. It also helps with having companions. And one of the largest fears of baby boomers and, and people as they age is being alone. Interesting. You know, as they age. Yeah. Who's going to take care of me? It's one of their number one greatest fears. Right. So co-housing um, or shared living mm-hmm. is one of the solutions. And and I think it's not going to be that much longer, and you're going to be seeing much more of that because 10,000 baby boomers are retiring every day in America. And so it's wow. a silver tsunami that's hitting, and it, it's impacting every part of, of our lives. So 76 million baby boomers. And <clears throat> when you think of 10,000 that's retiring each year, that's impacting housing. Yes. It's impacting health care. It's, it's impacting every part of our life. So, um, so Rena, it's, it's just something to watch. Mm-hmm. If we've got these young people who either cannot afford the old American dream of, of the, the larger home um, or are choosing to live smaller in, in terms of their space so they can afford to have more experiences, <clears throat> and we've got the baby boomers who are going to apartments, they're downsizing, um, <clears throat> what's going to happen with all these really big homes? <laughs> well... <clears throat> You know, if if you start to look at the the housing market, I mean, there's always going to be a certain percentage of people that want a large home, uh-huh. and 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 they do it for many reasons. They have large families, or they just choose to have a bigger home. Nothing wrong with that. That's a certain percentage of the market. But when you look at a larger percentage of the market and how it's shifting, if you look at new housing, new housing construction right now, <clears throat> at one point the average house size in America was 2,400 square feet. It's now 1,800 square feet. And really? there are many, many homes in our area right now that are 1,400 square feet. Uh-huh. In 1,400 square feet, and actually in 1,200 square feet, you can put two bedrooms, two bathrooms, a nice kitchen, a nice big open area, which would be family room, mm-hmm. and then a plus space, which would be, and of course, laundry would be in there, too. Uh-huh. That, that's just 1,400 square feet. Can you imagine, <clears throat> you know, the market for that? So for... Single women, for baby boomers that are not wanting the big properties anymore, right. but they still want their their little gardens and so forth. Uh-huh. There are communities popping up everywhere that that that, that will be an interesting fit. Mm-hmm. Now, in terms of a, a younger generation, you know, as because housing has become pretty unaffordable mm-hmm. um, for many, and of course with kids being delayed in terms, of, you know moving out of the house, um, their first home, you know, when you think about when we bought our first home, our first home, I think I was maybe 30 years old, maybe 29, Uh and then a second home and a third home. Um, Many of the young people will not be buying their home if they buy a home at all. They won't be buying it into their mid to late 30s. Right. So, and and families are being delayed and so forth. So there's a lot of things that are shifting right now. Mm -hmm. And, and, And it's not bad. I mean, I think really what it's pointing to is is the idea of simpler living, yeah. simplifying it, so we're not they're not as encumbered mm-hmm. anymore with all the stuff that you know that, that we've been encumbered by. Right. And, and I, I say encumbered, and that that's 
sounds negative, but it's really not. It's just the way that we sometimes change as, as we get a little bit older. I think about um, <clears throat> having raised, you know, a whole generation of children with um, parents, often, you know, both parents working outside of the home, um, often, you know, more than 40 hours a week each, um, and the kids having so many things to do that they, they watch their parents' lifestyle and it's kind of like, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of like the parenting thing. You know, we, we swear that we're not going to be our, our, our own parents. You know, we're going to parent differently. So we make different choices and, of course, we make our own mistakes. But I, I wonder if the, you know, the, the generation now the, that are in their 20s and 30s are, if they're saying to themselves, you know, I don't want to have all that responsibility. Mm-hmm. I don't want to spend so much of my time dealing with the frustrations or the responsibilities associated with, um, a house and a property the way my parents did. I think that really is so true. So, and, and if you look at the millennial, you know, what they're choosing are experiences mm-hmm. over stuff. Right. And so when they have less money, they're actually choosing how to use that money, which is lifestyle design, how you choose yes. to live your life every day. They're choosing to, you know, go to theater or go to concerts or, you know, whatever it is, but they're not choosing to spend money on car payments uh-huh. or, or house payments. You know, all those things that we might have done as younger people. Uh-huh. And actually, I admire that. I do, too. I do too. <laughs> um, Because when all is said and done, what, what do you remember most? It's, it's maybe not the Christmas present that you got, but it was the picnic in the Alps that your uh-huh. mom created, whatever, whatever it was. You know, those experiences are so valuable. They are. So, <clears throat> and even the simple a, experiences of, of, like, making cookies together instead of getting the big present. Uh, like, you know, it's, it's um, that time together to, to be and then to, to, you know, experience something new as well. Absolutely. So uh, the baby boomer generation and, and those that are grandparents, uh-huh. um, and you probably see this among your friends, you know, they create opportunities for families to gather, you know, at you know, maybe a beach property or something like that. Uh-huh. But it's creating experiences over more meaningless stuff. Right. So many families have said, well, we're not going to give Christmas presents this year. If we do, there'll only be one. But what we are going to do is we're going to take you to Disneyland or we're going to, you know, go spend the week and, you know, at this beautiful, whatever, ski resort. <clears throat> and, and it's all about creating experiences because yeah. experiences are what you remember. They are, yes. There was a fascinating study done that I was reading about recently. It's called Middle Class Abundance and a Cluttered Life. Uh They studied 32 middle class families. They took over 20,000 photos. And the intention of this was to say, how do people use their space? How many objects do they have in each room? Uh And it, it was fascinating because we... We Americans are basically hyper consumers, yep. and we have mountains of stuff. And also, it creates a high level of stress. And the study was interesting because it's particularly towards women. Women um, were impacted by the clutter effect, I guess it's called, uh-huh. where they feel the burden of having to clean up all of that stuff. Yeah. For some reason, it, it didn't impact men quite as much. Uh-huh. But women were constantly tidying up, whether it be toys or, or whatever it was. Right, right. And then they went, you know, the sheer quantity of, of the stuff that we collect um, was, was pretty powerful. And, and our homes are very dense with things like, you know, food. When you think about going to Costco or BJ, mm-hmm. you know, having six of something. Yes. Um, and this would never happen in another in another country uh-huh. um, because they don't have the space for it. So we I just see. create more space for more refrigerators, more our garage space. You know, there's a freezer there and a freezer downstairs. And um, it's just fascinating yeah. how, how we use our space and, and what it says about us as a country. Mm-hmm. We have to go to another quick break, but stay tuned for more with Rita Wilkins.
Did you know that all of the shows on the Transformation Radio Network are available as podcasts to stream or download? Really? Check us out. Go to transformationradio.fm. We have business shows, spiritual shows, energy healing shows, and pretty much everything in between. Something for everyone guaranteed to inspire, educate, and transform. We are transforming the world one listener at a time. Have you been seeing numbers like 111 and 222 everywhere you go? Do you feel that the universe may be trying to get your attention, perhaps offering a message of some sort? As it turns out, numerical patterns and certain types of geometry form the very fabric of our reality, from cells under a microscope to the astronomy of our night sky. At Stellar Reflections, we offer special sessions which tap into these patterns, designed specifically to support you on your journey. The 111 and 222 activations are sessions activating new patterns in your energy field, which in turn can help you create new patterns in your life. After just one session with a practitioner, either in person or via distance, clients report gaining greater clarity, becoming more intuitive, and honoring their inner truth as they move forward in their lives. Curious about what these transformational sessions might do for you? Call 425-999-9836 or visit StellarReflections.com. That's StellarReflections.com. I'm Peggy Snow with another Stellar Reflections Minute. Presence, or what we think of as being fully in the moment, is a key element in the process of healing work. As a practitioner facilitating a session, genuine presence takes us out of our heads where we tend to decide what is and maybe what should be for the client and moves us into direct experience where we're available to witness the person in their wholeness. In this receptive realm, our senses are heightened and expanded, allowing us to perceive what's seeking to unfold and to interact in the moment. There's something profoundly powerful that happens when healing is approached in this simple, pure way. Balance can be restored and healing can take place on multiple levels. If you'd like more information about the services we offer at Stellar Reflections, visit us at StellarReflections.com or call 425-999-9836. That's 425-999-9836. Don't miss out on an opportunity to hear from Lou Paradise, health and vibrant living expert and founder of Topperson. Lou is a featured speaker at the New You Life Conference in Connecticut, Saturday, September 15th. Tickets are available now. For information and tickets, click the button on the homepage of louparadise.com. That's louparadise.com. Welcome back to the Christine Upchurch Show here on KKNW and Transformation Talk Radio. Uh, if you want to hear this again, you want to share this with others, please go, go to christineupchurch.com. By the end of the weekend, this should be posted on my website, and you can get to the other archives as well. Now, Rita, before this um, hour is up, and I tell you, this, this conversation is just flying by, uh, I want you to share with our listeners how they can connect with you, when your book's coming out, you know, what events you've got coming up. Okay. Well, thank you. So they can reach me at, actually, I put my cell out there. It's 302-354-0972. And my book is coming out in the middle of November. It's called Downsize Your Life, Upgrade Your Lifestyle, How to Have More Time, Money, and Freedom. Mm, and that. if you are interested, we are having... Um, I'm having some workshops, and the, the one in Philadelphia, I live right in the heart of historic Philadelphia, we're having um, a two-day immersive retreat where it's called Design the Life That You Love. It is on Thursday, the 8th, and Saturday, um, excuse me, Friday the 8th, and Saturday the 9th of November from 9 to 5 p.m. And we have some really fun surprises for that workshop, but you will walk out changed, that's for sure. Great, great. So, and... Um, let's see, your website is? DesignServicesLTD.com. Okay, great. That's DesignServicesLTD.com. All yes, right. And you can also go to RitaWilkins.com. Okay. That's a little bit easier. R-I-T-A-W-I-L-K-I-N-S.com. Mm-hmm. 
So, Rita, <laughs> oh, you, you've talked about the trends. You've talked about some of the benefits. What about the process? Let's say you've got the 5,000-square-foot home and you're going to go down to the 1,400 square feet or the 900 square feet or, you know, move into that little uh, uh, mother-in-law <laughs> suite in the backyard of your kid's um, home. What, how do you go through the process of getting rid of all that stuff? <laughs> so, actually, I have a YouTube video that, that people are welcome to go to. It's called The ABCs of Downsizing, and it's under Rita Wilkins. Um, so, as a designer, uh, we, we do buildings and we do large homes and so forth. So, there's always a process, and maybe it's just the way that my brain works. But as, as I sat in my living room crying, like, where do I even begin uh-huh. on day one, and there was absolute overwhelm. I totally understand when people say, how do, how do you do this? You know, I'm overwhelmed. I'm stressed. I was too. So I, I just stood back and I said, okay, well, if I make this a game rather than a project, uh-huh. <laughs> um, I, I'm, all, I'm a believer in building teams. And so I called my family and my friends and I said, what if you came to my house just for four hours on a weekend, not every weekend, of course, but once in a while. Uh-huh. And we're going to work on one tiny part of my house. And that was what we did for one year. So we would literally stop, at the hard stop at four hours. Uh-huh. And, and by that time, things would have gone to Goodwill or gone to wherever they were going to go. And then we would drink wine and eat food. <laughs> so, <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> we, made, we made it a game. Uh-huh. Um, but the process itself, I call it the ABCs of downsizing because when you look at everything in your home, there are obviously things that you really value. Right. And so I call that the A-list. Uh-huh. And it could be something as, as ugly as, you know, your grandmother's chest. But mm-hmm. it means so much to you. No matter what, right. that's on your A-list and that's going with you. I'm going to go to the C-list because the C-list are those things that you walk through your home and you know darn well you're never going to use that again uh-huh. or you don't like it or you're, it's so done, you're so done with it. And those just get out of the house. Uh-huh. So right now you've got your A list, and those are all marked. So I use big sticky notes, and that's my A list, that beautiful sofa that I absolutely still love. Or on the C list, everything there is going out the door to where we're going to donate, sell, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Now you're going to start to see progress. And the B list is by far the harder one. Uh-huh. And so B, B list are the ones that you kind of winnow down. And for me, clothing was the hardest. Oh, interesting. And then you might want to get, and in this case, I had a a, a friend who was a Marine colonel, and she said, I will <laughs> be it. glad to help you, and, <laughs> but I'm not going to do the work. You have to do the work. Uh-huh. And so she she literally sat there one day, and she made me try on every piece of clothing. Uh-huh. Now, mind you, I had 11 closets and nine rolling racks. So I had a lot of fruit. Oh, my goodness. And she sat there. I know. It was way too much. But <laughs> she sat there with her arms folded. <laughs> I tried it on. And then she would say, Rita, that looks like hell on you. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I was, okay. Brutal honesty. <laughs> <You mean nothing? laughs> Brutally honest. So we all need a friend like that in our lives when uh-huh. we're downsizing. And, um, so, and then, you know, you're going to run into certain things that will just bring tears to your eyes. Uh-huh. So for me, it was one of my sisters was, was helping me one weekend, and we were down in the basement, and I hadn't seen this box in 10 years, and I opened it up. And I discovered our father's alarm clock. Oh. And as soon as I saw that alarm clock, I started to just cry like mm-hmm. a baby. Mm-hmm. And I remember hearing him wind that clock. It was just one of those old Timex watch, um, clocks that probably cost one dollar. Right. And I heard him winding it to get oh. up early in the morning to provide for our family. So you are going to experience those kind of things. And what my sister came over and we both cried. Mm-hmm. And then we said, you know, Dad wouldn't want us. To, you know, pass the alarm clock. Uh-huh. So we took a picture of it, and then I created a Shutterfly book of stories about those things like that that really meant something to me. So you maintain the so, memory without the stuff. Absolutely. So you know, when someday my grandchildren will say, you know, why did, why would Grandma be crying about a clock? Uh-huh. <laughs> but there's the story. You know, right. our dad getting up early in the morning. So. I, my boys really appreciated that thought because mm-hmm. they didn't want the alarm clock, obviously. They didn't right. want the stuff. 
but now they have the memories, and it's all in one little Shutterfly book. That's wonderful. Wow, this hour has flown by, Rita. Um, I want to mention your website again, RitaWilkins.com or DesignServicesLTD.com. Um, Rita, thank you so much for joining us here today, and thank you for doing this important work. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, and I love what you're up to. Uh, thank and, you, Christy. And thank you for joining us here today. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Bye, everybody. You've been listening to The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey. Each week, this show engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more information about the transformative healing work of Christine, visit www.StellarReflections.com. And for weekly topics, visit www.TransformationTalkRadio.com. 